The heart is composed of two different types of cells, cardiac myocytes and pacemaker cells. In this video, we will explore how an action potential is started in cardiac myocytes, also called cardiomyocytes or cardiac muscle cells. The cardiomyocytes are responsible for the mechanical contractile force that pumps the blood through the body. They are an involuntary striated muscle that constitutes the main tissue of the wall of the heart. Unlike pacemaker cells, shown in yellow in the figure, cardiac muscle cells cannot initiate action potentials. Instead, cardiomyocytes propagate the action potentials that are initiated by neighboring pacemaker cells. The heart can coordinate muscle contraction because cardiomyocytes are linked to each other and to pacemaker cells through a special type of gap junction called intercalated discs that can quickly propagate action potentials. An action potential is a sudden, rapid, transient, and propagating change in the electrical membrane potential. The ventricular cardiomyocyte action potential waveform looks something like this and can be divided into five main phases numbered from zero to four. Let's start with phase zero of the cycle, also called the depolarization phase. During this phase, the membrane potential increases very quickly. The action potential from adjacent cells propagates and causes the membrane potential to rise above minus 90 millivolts. When the cardiomyocyte's membrane potential reaches the threshold potential of approximately minus 70 millivolts, Voltage-gated sodium channels open to allow sodium to rapidly rush into the cell and generate an action potential. If the membrane potential does not reach minus 70 millivolts, an action potential will not be generated. Next is phase one, the initial repolarization phase or early repolarization. There is a slight drop in the membrane potential in this phase. When the membrane potential reaches the max voltage of around 20 millivolts, the sodium channels inactivate and block the movement of sodium into the cell. At the same time, potassium voltage-gated channels open to allow an efflux of positively charged potassium out of the cell. This effectively leads to a slight drop in the membrane potential. Phase two of the cycle is also known as the plateau phase. During this phase, the voltage across the cell membrane stays fairly constant at around zero millivolts. Calcium voltage-gated channels open to allow an influx of calcium ions into the cell. These calcium ions will interact with ion channels on the cardiomyocyte's sarcoplasmic reticulum and are ultimately responsible for the contraction of the heart during systole. At the same time, the potassium channels remain open to allow the efflux of potassium ions. The movement of these positively charged ions in opposite directions creates a transient equilibrium and results in a relatively constant cell membrane potential. This plateau phase is responsible for the large duration of the action potential and is important in preventing irregular heartbeats. Phase three is the rapid repolarization phase. The membrane potential drops rapidly during this phase. After the myocyte has contracted, the calcium channels close while the potassium channels remain open to continue to allow potassium to exit the cells. This means that there is a loss of positively charged ions, which results in a negative change in the membrane potential. Thus, the cell repolarizes. The fourth phase is called the resting phase. The resting membrane potential is restored to around minus 90 millivolts and the heart is in diastole, the relaxed phase of the cardiac cycle. When the resting membrane potential reaches minus 90 millivolts, the potassium channels close. The resting membrane potential is maintained by different ion pumps in the cell's membrane. These ion pumps maintain an equal inward and outward current of ions, which helps keep the intracellular concentration of ions constant. 
Such ion pumps include the sodium-potassium pump, potassium leak channels, and sodium-calcium exchangers. The shape of the action potential waveform between contractile cardiomyocytes are different from pacemaker cells in many ways. First, the resting membrane potential in cardiomyocytes stays constant at around minus 90 millivolts until an outside stimulus is received and raises the membrane potential. In pacemaker cells, the resting membrane potential is relatively unstable and typically ranges between minus 60 millivolts and minus 40 millivolts due to the presence of funny or IF channels that allow an influx of sodium ions. Second, depolarization in contractile cardiomyocytes occur rapidly due to the opening of voltage-gated fast sodium channels, resulting in a rapid influx of sodium ions and a steep rise in the action potential. Depolarization in pacemaker cells is a more gradual process because the phase depends on the opening of voltage-gated calcium channels, which are slower to activate. Finally, in contractile cardiomyocytes, there is a plateau phase during which calcium voltage-gated channels open to allow calcium ions into the cell. This influx of calcium ions eventually leads to the contraction of the heart. There is no plateau phase in pacemaker cells, however, and so repolarization happens in one stroke. Now, time for some questions to test your understanding. Which phase of the action potential waveform in cardiomyocytes is characterized by the opening of voltage-gated calcium channels, leading to the contraction of the heart? Pause here if you need more time to think. Let's start by taking another look at the cardiomyocyte membrane potential waveform. During the resting membrane potential phase, Ions are flowing in and out of the cell in equilibrium to maintain a constant membrane potential. Therefore, the answer is not A. During depolarization, sodium channels open to allow an influx of sodium ions. Calcium channels are not open, therefore B is not correct. In the plateau phase of the action potential waveform in cardiomyocytes, voltage-gated calcium channels open allowing calcium ions to enter the cell. This influx of calcium ions sustains the depolarization and extends the action potential, ensuring the contraction of the heart. The plateau phase is an essential phase for adequate filling of the heart chambers before contraction. Therefore, the answer is C. The answer is not D because the calcium channels close during rapid repolarization and the potassium channels are open so that potassium ions can exit the cell and bring the membrane potential back to the resting membrane potential. Did you get the question right? Comment what you thought down below. If you want to learn more about this subject, check out this video. And if you want to learn the same thing but in French, check out this video. Be sure to like and subscribe for more videos like this. Thanks for watching. Bye!